Good morning, Sternberg family. How are we doing today? This is Reese Barrick, uh, your friendly neighborhood museum director. And I was trying to figure out what to talk about today. And so I was thinking we have a, one of our largest collections overall. That's kind of cool and probably one I know the least about. But I thought it would be fun to dive in anyway because we do have all kinds of cool um, things that I am not anywhere close to being an expert at, which is a lot of things, but especially um, something that is really cool for every kid, and lots of kids have made collections of these. I even had one when I was a Cub Scout, I think, but I, it's not one that survives, unlike my leaf collection, and that is um, insects. Insects are really cool, and they they really uh, run the world. It's an arthropod world, and insects are arthropods, and they're uh, probably the highest diversity, or they are the highest diversity uh, of animals on the planet, which is kind of cool. So I thought maybe we would take a quick run through of what we have in our collections at the Sturm. So we have cabinets and there's not nearly as many cabinets of insects as there are of other animals uh, that we have at the Sternberg. But as you know, they're all pretty small. So we have, um, can have lots of them in very small areas. So our first cabinet here that I thought we would look at has uh, a bunch of things like um, there's uh, I'm gonna give you some names here but uh, for the most part for most of our arthropods they're classified into uh, at the museum into orders and what's an order uh, we do if you do Linnaean classification we do kingdom animals phylum uh, invertebrates, class, um, insects, order. What do we got? Kingdom, class, order. So lots of our insects we put into groups of orders because of, of different types of insects that are similar to each other. Um, and one of our orders that we have is called Odontata. Odontata is kind of cool and it consists of dragonflies and damselflies. And there are almost 6,000 species of dragonflies and damselflies. So if we pull out some of these drawers, we can see some pretty nice, typical, cool dragonflies. All right, uh, dragonflies and damselflies are similar with one of the exceptions, I won't say the exception because I'm not a complete expert on these things, but dragonflies have these fixed wings. They're fixed wing aircraft. Um, so when they are flying about, they're flying with their two pairs of wings here, but they also, when they come to a rest, their wings stay out strutting just like this. Whereas damselflies is a large order of insects. And you can see when they're flying, they have a similar two pairs of wings they fly around on with long bodies. But when they are at rest, you can see the wings are spread out here as if they were flying. And down here we have some samples of ones where they're at rest, where their wings are folded uh, along their bodies. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So, very cool difference. And we have some, ooh, some much more colorful uh, dragonflies. And they're, uh, like I said, between dragonflies and damselflies, there's some 6,000 different species of them. And which is actually pretty small when you think about uh, orders of insects. 
um, which is why they're over in an area where we only have a few drawers of them. Okay, so dun, dun, dun. I just thought I'd pull out and show you a few drawers. Oh, here's a bit some more uh, damselflies. Um, and these, our insect collections are the works of uh, a lot of our students at Fort Hayes when they take uh, entomology with Dr. Pakowskis, have to make cool collections of insects and lots of them come over here and end up in our Sternberg collections. It's one of the things we're really just getting started on trying to get them all organized and hope, start to get them digitized, which is kind of cool. So this is sort of our area of dragonflies and damselflies. Um, <laughs> oh, and here's some more interesting ones, just because of a little bit of more diversity in the odontata. All right, so I thought we'd move over here. Uh, we have also another group of insects that we're all very familiar with, and that's the orthoptera. And orthoptera are cool, and they're very things that we know about because this includes the grasshoppers, locusts, and crickets. So here we've got a variety of some of large grasshoppers, right? And again, in the orthoptera, there are some 20,000 species. So when we have plagues of locusts, um, there's a lot of species of them. Um, and grasshoppers and crickets are all related to each other in the same order. And here we get some, it's kind of cool. We can look at the typical grasshoppers, the way they're mounted and they're pinned. And then occasionally we try to spread a wing out so you can see their full color. And a lot of these guys do have pretty colorful wings, colorful legs, colorful bodies. Mm -mm -mm. And a fairly good, interesting collection. And you can see the differences in how different students have been able to get them pinned. And we've got a number of boxes. So you can see a lot of different cool sorts of grasshoppers. And so when you see grasshoppers, they're certainly not all the same. There's just a huge abundance and variety. Uh, again, some 20,000 different species of grasshoppers, crickets, and locusts. So I just thought we'd come take a little bit of a tour and see just a smattering of what the Sternberg has. Now we just have, if you think about it, we don't have 20,000 species of grasshoppers and locusts at the Sternberg. We have, but a few, relatively speaking. Um, so even though this is one of our largest collections as far as in numbers of individuals, it's a really pretty small collection as far as insects of the world go. Um, but it is a nice representation of insects from Kansas, which is kind of cool. And you think about it, now when you put it in the perspective of most of these things coming from Kansas, or at least uh, surrounding states of the Midwest, and you can look and see, well, there's a lot of different types of grasshoppers and crickets here. So that gives you a little bit more, of, makes it a little more impressive to think that all these different sorts of things are living either in Kansas or very close to Kansas, all right? So just kind of a cool, and that's orthoptera, our very kind of cool friends that we see, uh, especially in the late summer, uh, flying around, you can tell it gets noisy out. Um, 
when these guys are, are flying around. Mm -mm -mm. And it's when they start munching on crops and things, which uh, farmers and ranchers don't necessarily love so much. But they're great things to collect if you are into or have kids into 4-H. I think entomology collection is one of the fun things that can be done. Um, if you go out to the right, in the right, especially in the right time of year, you can get a huge collection of different kinds of nifty insects. Matter of fact, I've got a 13 year old at home that needs to get cranking on his insect collection this year. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move over a little bit and see what other kinds of cool things we've got. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, let's see. <laughs> this. Yeah. We're going to look at. Sorry about the little bit of. Part of being the camera person and the. Trying to talk at the same time. We've got another cool um, set of organisms that belong to the order, Kingdom Phylum class order, Heteroptera, which are your typical bugs. Um, Heteroptera are in a larger group called Hemiptera, and that is what we call true bugs. So when you say, that's a bug, or I love bugs, or I hate bugs, I have to think what you're really talking about is a specific group of insects in the Hemiptera or Heteroptera that are your actual true bugs. And so there's a whole range of true bugs. Um, there are over 40,000 species of bugs. Mm -mm. And some of them are very large. Um, you get water bugs. Um, Pill bugs, you get all kinds of, well, not pill bugs, take that back. I know that's not, not a true bug. But um, Heteroptera have four wings, which are different from their, uh, that have, their four wings have a hardened part and a membranous, membranous part of the wing. And again, we got 40,000 different sorts of actual true bugs and they come in a pretty large variety but if you were to wander around out into the nature trail or out into your backyard and you saw things like this crawling around you would call it a bug and in this case you would actually be correct and some of them get to be really really small and fine and this is ones where you really are impressed that the students are able to get these guys with a pin through them. Really quite impressive, if you think about it. <laughs> and here's another whole drawer and variety. These are, and when you get to breaking them down, the easiest thing for most of us is to remember the orders um, but Kingdom Phylum class order, the next uh, uh, classification down is family. So these cases are often di divided into families or family members of true bugs. There's, you can see a name, Koreidae. So that's the family. Anything with a D-A-E at the end of it means family in our classification systems. Mm-mm-mm. So this is a whole box of one specific family of bugs in the Korea day. Very cool. And you can see they got these really enlarged areas on their hind limbs. Kind of cool. Let's see. And those are some of the bigger ones. And here we start to get some medium sized to smaller bugs in a family called Miridae. And you can see what's kind of interesting. I don't know if 
we can focus back in when we go pull away, but you can see how many individuals can be put in a single box when you get smaller ones here. So huge varieties of these guys and some of them can oops, get to be pretty colorful. Oh, there we go. I knew I saw some red in here. All right. So uh, I see Elmer's watching. If you got anything you want to see Elmer or want to talk about uh, with bugs, feel free to help help out. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. All right, so this is the true bug area. And again, we called these guys the Heteroptera, um, which means they have different wings. Um, if we come up and around to, oh wait, there's some more cool bugs in here we have to look at. Here we go. These are things. All right, in the variety of bugs, you can see the, the names, the species names under there for each different kind. Microstomus percus. All right. Things that I didn't know. Now, if I remembered all these things, I could say I'm really learning a lot. I'm not sure I'm going to remember all of these just by pulling them out and looking at them. But it's certainly a lot of fun things to collect. And when you think about some of the bugs you see, you see thousands of them and they all look the same. And there are gonna be thousands of individuals of some species, but there's also gonna be a lot of different species that seem pretty similar. They're gonna be actually quite different. So we're going through a whole drawer with the same family, but even within the same family, you're getting a number of different species. And while they all look very similar, some of them are much bigger and greener and browner than other ones. Let's see. This. come up around over here and we'll come up to another cool group of insects that we all know and love and these are the hymenoptera hymenoptera what is hymenoptera it's a hundred and fifty thousand now we're starting to get bigger species of wasps bees and ants so for those of you who didn't know Ants and wasps are very closely related. We might have assumed that bees and wasps were closely related, um, but ants are also very closely related to bees and wasps. And interestingly enough, termites, which we oftentimes think are closely related to ants, are not. They're more uh, closely related to cockroaches even though they kind of look similar to ants. But ants, bees, and wasps are belong to a group called Hymenoptera. And this, um, let's see. Oh, we've got all kinds of cool different wasps. <laughs> Some of them really large, then we can get down to looking at some ants. Yeah, so we even have a pretty good collection of ants here in the same drawers. Oh, Jacob. Jacob is watching. Jacob should know about these things, right? And he says, sure. So we have a huge variety of uh, Hymenoptera. Let's see what other kinds we have over here. Mm -hmm. And we come up with all kinds of varieties of names of wasps, hornets, yellow jackets, um, 
huge variety of stinging things. And if you think about it, they all have a very similar sort of outline or shape, but there's a lot of diversity of things that are going to sting you. I remember, and you know, some, be some bees like uh, honeybees and things where they will sting you and they lose their stinger when they sting you. So they're basically signing their own death warrant. But things like hornets and wasps can pretty much continuously sting you at will. I remember one time in scout camp when I was about 13, I was running down a trail and all of a sudden I felt the sting in the middle of my chest and I stopped. It stopped. I thought there was just something poking me. I took off running again, got stung again. Got stung six times before I got my shirt open and out flew a wasp. And he said, thank you very much for letting me out. I'm surprised that you were dumb enough that it took me six times knocking on your chest, stinging you, before you decided that it was worthwhile to let me out. Oh, now here's some beautiful, we've got blues and purples. Uh, in the abdomens of some of these things. It's really quite amazing. And again, if we're talking about global diversity, we don't have a whole heck of a lot. <laughs> Elmer says, can I find velvet ants? Yes, <laughs> that's a good question. Can I find velvet ants? Velvet ants are awesome because they are actually wasps that look like ants and uh, 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 uh. let's see Motilidae that's a good question dun, 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 dun. I'm on a search for Elmer to see if we have any velvet ants how about if we look in here aha Elmer's wish is my command. So we open up a drawer and here we have some velvet ants. And these guys are really cool because they're wingless wasps. Um, and they run around and they look very pretty with orange or red and black stripes. And they look very velvety. But while well, you think these would be fun to collect and pick up you want to be very careful because when these sting you they are pretty much one of the top five most painful feelings or stings on the planet um, so they're very beautiful they're very lovely and is with many things in nature the more beautiful and lovely something is Probably the less likely you want to have a close encounter with it. <laughs> right, so yes, wasps where the females look like ants. Very cool. Thanks for bringing that up, Elmer, and making me dig through the drawers a little bit more. Wow. The diversity of the Hymenoptera in Kansas in this area is really pretty astounding, if you ask me. Oh, and I don't know how this got over here. That's kind of a fascinating thing. <laughs> Have to talk with somebody. Uh, putting our collections together. All right. Dave says in Texas they call them cow killers. Huh. All right. Very cool. Did not know that. Um, let's see. What else have we got here? Dun, dun, dun. Whoa. Now these are obviously not wasps and bees. Um, let's see. Mm 
Well, we'll take a look while I try to remember what the heck these ones are. Um. Oh, we're up to over here. Looks like Coleoptera. Yay, here we go. That's what we're looking at. Or what I was meaning to look at over here are Coleoptera, another order. And this is the most musical order of all the insects. I'm just kidding, because it's the Beatles. Classic music, right? All right, so they spelled their name a little different. But Beatles are one of the largest groups of insects. 400,000 species, 400,000. Um, and of those 400,000 species, we've got uh, 83,000 are weevils, things that might get in your flower. Um, so these guys look like there might be some water water beetles, which is kind of cool. So, um, beetles, 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 yes. They're pretty easy to, to figure out. Their, their four wings are hard, hard casings. So, we have hard cased things in the beetle class. And again, one of the largest diversities in the insects and they're everywhere and they're very, very cool. And the diversity from things that look like the, the well, and beetles can fly, many of them can. So, but things that look like they're cool flying fly kind of things to things that have large, um, look like rhino beetles or uh, all kinds of variety of cool beetles with their large, um, goodness gracious, I'm drawing a blank. I don't know my insect parts as well as I should. Uh, 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 uh. Anyway, we've got a huge, look there, a huge variety of beetles and they can go from being pretty small also and colorful and striped to just simply black and very rounded to much more elongate so beetles so when you talk about seeing beetles again you're using a classification system. Beetles all belong to an order called Coleoptera. <laughs> Oops. All right, we're getting a little bit too high for me. All right, let's see. Now I suppose we should come over to the things that most everybody's been waiting for uh, as far as the insects go. And that is what we actually have the most drawers of. And that is the Lepidoptera. Lepidoptera are basically all of your butterflies and moths. There are 180,000 species of butterflies and moths. Now, we don't, um, even though the, the Coleoptera, the beetles are much more diverse uh, we see uh, Lepidoptera a lot more often because they're very uh, garish and beautiful um, with lots of different colors. And they're flying in front of us and they're often relatively large so that we get to see them. And we have had uh, really avid collectors of our Lepidoptera and so we have amazing collection of them. And we have them from Kansas and from all in a lot of surrounding states, 
even down, I believe, as far as Texas. And here we get a really good chance with our Lepidoptera collection to see individual variation. Um, if there's sexual dimorphism or color differences, we get to see that. But um, our Lepidoptera collection is really, really spectacular and beautiful. And if you ever get a chance, um, you'll get a chance to see or come in and take a tour. You should come in and really try to take a tour of just our Lepidoptera collection. Um, it's really pretty nice with a huge variety of butterflies and moths. And this is kind of the fun thing because they're really spectacular. And some of them, again, you can find a range of really small ones and things that can be pretty drab to the kinds of thing, moths and things that fly in every fall or, or spring and infest your house to much larger, really beautiful butterflies. So we're just gonna open a few drawers and see things that are, each drawer has families that are fairly closely related. And even though they're really closely related, you can see really cool colors of green to white, but with lots of really cool patterns to white that's pretty plain. So we get the whole spectrum when we look at our moths and butterflies. Let's just, we've got cabinets and cabinets of these. We're just gonna go around the corner, see what's on this side. So drawers of pinned moths. We're over in the moth section now. Um, these are ones that we see um, really abundant in Kansas. Really kind of beautiful. And these all, this whole drawer, or not drawer, but section of drawers are all belong to the same family. So they're all Lepidopterans, they're all moths in the, the Sphinx moth, the Sphingidae, right? But even here, these guys are huge and there's lots of different colors within the same color pattern and lots of different patterns. So moths are pretty amazing. Excuse me. As we know, it's pollen time in Kansas. Uh, uh, uh. So we had to get to the moths for a little bit. And, yep, we have some really beautiful moths in Kansas. And all you need to do, see a lot of these things flying, is go out to tennis courts in the summer where you've got, at nighttime, we you got the lights on, uh, or you can go to fall football games and, and the lights, you can see all kinds of cool moths flying around. Let's see. Then we've got, so, I think we're back to butterflies. And again, we have lots and lots of butterflies, sometimes of just a single individual species. And so we can really look at the color variation within a single species. And that's very fun and useful because we learn a lot about evolution when we can look at individual variation. Some things of butterflies are a little, I don't know, try to get, maybe, there we go, block out some, some of our light problems here. And there we go, let's go 
over here to the Nymphalidae, which is another family of butterflies. And again, we collect sometimes dozens to hundreds of individuals of a single species so we can look at individual variation. Pretty beautiful. Other times we get fewer ones, but this is just kind of, I'm giving you a drop in the bucket of a little bit of some of the cool variation of different butterflies or Lepidoptera that we have in the Sternberg collections. And if this does, you know, when you see just this amount of variety and you know it is out here in your backyard and in the fields next to you or out by the creek nearby, or if you have some woods, this should make you want to go out and see what you can find. Maybe even make your own collection, All right? Pretty spectacular. And there's hundreds of them out there. You just have to be outside, right? It's another great excuse to get outdoors because there's so much out there waiting for you to come check it out. What you got, some common friends, the things that we see, like our monarch butterflies. We have a whole celebration here at the museum and also down at the wetland center every fall to help trace the monarch flights and, and do survey counts of monarchs. Um, try to figure out how to get the best color without getting too much glare. And again, you can see quite a bit of variation in color from reds to more yellows to much more defined stripes. A lot of cool variation. And then you can get to a different species. Here. Oops, sorry, very beautiful varieties. To get our, t our swallowtails and our tiger swallowtails. Got the cool swallowtails there. Butterflies. Absolutely beautiful. This is actually a uh, state butterfly for a number, a couple of different states. Can't remember which ones though. These are cool because you get to see some morphs where you get color differences, right? In the same species, look, you got the bright yellow with the black and you get the dark color morphs. Look at that with the blues and oranges, really kind of spectacular. And every once in a while with these things, you will get ones where you get an individual that's got a dark wing and a yellow wing in the same individual. So we got all kinds of interesting genetics that go on with some of these butterflies and you can catch them and it really gives you a, a fun, interesting idea. It's kind of cool. This family of butterflies is called Papillonidae, and which basically French for butterfly. So it is like, you know, the butterflies of butterflies, right? Really beautiful, we have lots and lots of them. And some really cool varieties of them. Some of them you can see perfectly straight through their wings and they still have some cool colors. All right, so. Again, different species with different color patterns, but all spectacularly beautiful. And let me get some more oops. colors, blues, whites. Spectacular, and who would have guessed you got this kind of diversity of amazingly beautiful things out flying? And 
background. This is where I need, just need some background music because there's not a whole lot else I have to say other than it's really kind of one of the things that makes um, the museum unique and fun and why a natural history museum is fun because as a paleontologist, you know, I like to go play with the fossils all the time, but sometimes, uh, you know, we're all sort of naturalists and it, it's even surprising to me because I realize, geez, I need to spend more time outside, not with my nose just into the ground looking at the rocks, but looking around to see all the other, uh, the rest of the cool nature. You know, if you would have asked me what kind of diversity of, of butterflies we had and bugs we had here in Kansas, I would have been surprised um, to just see all of the cool diversity that we've got. So go outside. Go outside by yourself or with your family. We still need to keep our social distancing and we don't want to be sneezing on each other. Um, but it's, I know it's going to be a little cold in this, this week, but we're heading into spring and summer when there's just so much fun to do when we get outside. Come out to visit the nature trail if you get a chance. So that's it for me for this morning. Um, so this is the dome from home. I'm Reese Barrick. Give us a like, give us a follow, and we will see you, I guess, Ian will be around 2 o'clock this afternoon. All right, have a great day. Bye.